these last two examples are a little bit different. We'll solve them with the standard techniques, but the result ends up being a little bit unexpected. We'll start this one by distributing the two. I have two times three x, which is six x, plus two times five, which is 10. So six x plus 10 over here, six x minus seven. Okay, now I need to get rid of one of these x's because I'm trying to solve for x. I need to get a single x isolated. So watch this though. If I subtract 6x on the left and on the right, both sides, well this 6x and this minus 6x cancels out. And the same thing happens on the right. I'm left with 10 on the left equals over here negative 7. 10 is equal to negative 7. And that's obviously wrong. This is not true. In fact, this is never true. There's not any number that I could put in for x that would make this true. So this is a problem that has no solution. And you should write that as your answer. There is no number for x that you can put in and make this equal that. And this does happen uh, from time to time. There are problems that cannot be solved, problems that have no solution. And you shouldn't just leave your answers um, just as a, as a statement that isn't, isn't possibly true. You should write this to indicate that you understand that there is no solution to the problem. And when you're, when you're doing the math and you get to something like this that is obviously a contradiction, the first thing you should do is go check your work. Make sure you didn't make a mistake somewhere. But if you are, are sure you did the math correctly and you have something that cannot possibly be true, that typically tells you that there is no solution to the problem. Okay, and here's another one. 4 times x minus 5 equals 4x minus 20. So let's start by distributing the 4. 4 times x is 4x minus, and this is going to be 4 times 5. So that's going to be 20. 4x minus 20 equals, well, 4x minus 20. Well, those, the left side and the right side are the same. Um, you can see that if we added 20 to both sides, well, those 20s would cancel out. And on the right side, they would also, also cancel out. You're just left with 4x equals 4x. Well, this is always true. No matter what number you have for x, 4 times x will equal 4 times x. So this is always true. And again, when you are doing your math and you end up with something like this that is always true, the, the first thing you should do is check your work, make sure you didn't make a mistake somewhere. And if, you've, if you are confident you've done all the math correctly, and you still end up with a statement that cannot possibly be untrue, something that is always true, that typically means that the solution will be any real number. You could put in any number for x to the left, si left side and that same number for x on the right side and that equation would work. The left and the right side would be equivalent. And, and we have a name for this. An equation that is always true for any value of the variable is called an identity. So th this equation up here, the original equation, is an example of an identity. This is always equal to that for any value of the variable. If you want to write an answer to the problem, um, one thing you can write, you can write any real number. Any real number would be a valid solution to this equation. You could put in any number for x right there and there, and this would equal that.